bridge view. So this bridge that we've seen grow up out of the river and been learning about for several years now has a name. So today to tell us a little bit more about the bridge naming process is Chet Orloff, Chair of the TriMet Bridge Naming Committee and Director Emeritus of the Oregon Historical Society. Hello, Chet. Hi, Deanne. How are you? Fine. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about the TriMet Bridge Naming Committee. Uh, who was involved and um, what interests did they represent? This is a committee of 10 citizens from throughout the region, representing all three counties, six women and four men. And uh, they are geographers, historians, artists, citizen activists, all volunteers. And we got together last summer and had perhaps half a dozen <coughs> meetings where we worked on the naming process and brought our respective interests and knowledge perspectives together to finally make the decision. Wonderful. So I understand that you received over 9,500 submissions from the public for various bridge names. And I just have to ask, how did you narrow down such a large group of submissions from the public down to the four finalists? Well, we started with a list of criteria, and that helped us narrow narrow names down based on meaning, pronunciation, sense of place that the words conveyed. So we were able to very quickly narrow the list from close to 10,000 down to about 25 names. And we all agreed that those were names that could work. And then the next step was to narrow it down further to four finalists, we'll call it, which we did. I basically ordered the committee that it had to be unanimous. Mm, that we okay. had to leave the room with everyone saying, yes, these are the final four names that really work. And so the four finalists were Cascadia Crossing, Abigail Scott Dunaway Transit Bridge, Tillicum Crossing, and Wyeese Transit Bridge. Is correct. that correct? That's correct. Okay, so you have the four finalists. Again, how did you come up with the final one, the winner, if you will? Well, we, we put those four final names out to the public just to get a sense of were we on the right track, were we in sync with the community, and got a pretty good sense that we were. So we came back together and had a long meeting where we wrestled with these four names, what one would really work, and finally decided unanimously, enthusiastically, that Tillicum was the name that worked. It conveyed all the right meanings that we were looking for. It sounded right. It had a it's an old, long-used word, still used today, and it just worked for us. Wonderful. And I think it works for the community from what I've learned since. Great. So I, I remember seeing the four finalists, and the spelling of Tillicum was a little bit different in the four finalists versus the end, uh, the final name. So I'd love for you to speak a little bit about that, and then also the meaning of Tillicum as well. Yeah. Well, Tillicum spelling, T-I-L-I-K-U-M, is the spelling as... Chinook jargon has in it, and it is a Chinook jargon word. Um, the word means uh, friends, people, community, so all of the right meanings that connect sense of place to the bridge. And it's a word that is international. It's a, a jargon. In, in other words, it's used and spoken by, by tribes and peoples throughout the Pacific Northwest, and it was spoken by the first generation of Portlanders who lived here. So it has all those right connections to our history, to the culture of the place, and of course its final meaning, community, seems to tie the meanings of the bridge and the name together. Excellent. Thank you so much, Chet, for sharing a little bit about the bridge naming process You're today. Welcome. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. So Tillicum Crossing Bridge of the People, I think an appropriate name for this very special bridge. That's all the time we have for today, but we'll see you next time on Bridge View.